the perinatal care regions and perinatal committees uh, and the view that uh, there had to be a, a quality improvement uh, project, then um, uh, it was important to uh, establish this um, uh, local Texas model. Um, uh, I believe uh, that I have to actually introduce Dr. Uh, David Wysoli, uh, who is gonna be the moderator for this, um, uh, this session. Um, and um, is that correct, Dr. Wysoli? Yes, Dr. Savani, and you all can continue with, the, with this section, then we'll move into the round table afterwards. Okay, thank you for that. Um, okay, um, so it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Phyllis Wen Yuen. Uh, she's an assistant professor at uh, UT Southwestern and uh, has been intimately involved in the first collaborative uh, quality project for the North Central Texas Regional Advisory Committee, um, Perinatal Committee project. Uh, and we picked the newborn uh, temperature on admission as, uh, as our first project. And I think that uh, as you'll hear from uh, Dr. Wan Yuen, uh, we'll uh, see that uh, we've also made some strides in this area. Uh, so uh, Dr. Wan Yuen, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Savani. I don't know if you can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, so um, on a regional level, we also try to implement best practice guidelines to improve newborn admission temperatures in multi-level NICUs um, and mother baby units in the North Texas region. And for us, the North Texas region consisted of 54 hospitals um, uh, in, with different um, levels of NICUs. Next slide. So our objective was to use the state mandated regionalization of care to establish best practice guidelines and to decrease hypothermia on admission to NICU and mother baby unit by 20% without increasing hyperthermia over a three year period. Um, hyperthermia was also our balancing me measure. Uh, the perinatal committee of um, the North Central Tra Texas RAC aimed to standardize the collection of admission temperatures in all newborns. Next slide. Um, so we used the WHO criteria actually for hypo and hyperthermia, uh, which they define hypothermia as 36.5. So we did buffer for cold stress. So hypothermia was defined as less than 36 degrees Celsius and hyperthermia greater than 37.5. Um, and the perinatal committee, we held monthly meetings to share best practices. Um, temperature was recorded on admission to the NICU and within 20 to 60 minutes uh, of life in the mother baby unit. We had sent out quarterly surveys via SurveyMonkey um, and the regional listserv um, to, to obtain de-identified data um, on the number of missions uh, of infants to NICU and mother baby unit um, and the number of infants with hypo or hyperthermia on admission, um, method of obtaining temperature and institutional changes in temperature guidelines. We also had control charts um, to determine rate changes in hypo and hyperthermia. Next slide. So we captured a total of 37,986 infants um, over the three year period in the NICU. Um, baseline hypothermia was about 3.37% and hyperthermia was 8.39%. And we captured 237,800 infants um, in the mother baby unit over the three year period with baseline hypothermia being 1.26% and hyperthermia 7.77%. Um, Next slide. So one of our um, biggest obstacles was um, data reporting, um, especially with some of the smaller hospitals who didn't, may not have as much resources. Um, but overall, you can see that more than half of the hospitals um, reported um, 10 or more quarters. And we had 13 quarters total, including baseline. Um, so I think we did pretty well with the majority of, of the hospitals um, reporting 75% of the time. Next slide. So um, these are the control charts for the NICU. Um, for hypothermia, um, you can see that we did see a decrease in the rate of hypothermia over time. Um, and we, and 
in fact, we also had a decrease in hyperthermia, so that did not go up. And both hypothermia and hyperthermia in the NICU had a significant linear trend analysis with a p-value less than 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Next slide. In the mother baby unit, um, we saw similar results uh, with a nice decrease in um, the rate of hypothermia. Um, and while hyperthermia was a little bit staggered, its overall was also decreased. And um, the linear trend analysis was also um, significant with a p-value less than 0 0.01. Next slide. Um, in, in addition to decreasing the rates of hypothermia, we also were able to decrease intrahospital variability. So on the left, you can see the base, um, our baseline data where our hypothermia rates range from zero to 18% about. Um, but by the end of the three year period, um, the hospitals range, the, sorry, the hypothermic rate range from zero to maybe about 9%. And even the high hospitals, um, like Hospital 32, um, you know, came down quite a bit and Hospital 30 um, was less than 5%. So there were some improvements within the hospitals. Next slide. Um, Interhospital variation in, the, um, in hyperthermia also decreased. Um, so we started off with zero to about 30%. Um, and then by the end of the project, it was zero to about 14%. Next slide. So in the mother baby unit, um, we didn't see as good of results. We had our range started off between zero and about 6.5% and ended about the same. Um, but if you see some of the um, higher number NICUs are the NICUs that joined later in our project. And so, um, Hospital 49 was high, but that was probably um, the first or second time that they were um, reporting data. So I think that's why we did not see as much um, decrease in interhospital variability. And next slide. Um, for hyperthermia, we did see uh, um, less interhospital variability as well, um, starting from zero to about 33% initially and it dropped to about 30 to 14%. Next slide. So in summary, I think one of the benefits for a regionalized QI study is that we do capture a large population size. Um, we had 37,000, almost 38,000 infants in the NICU and 240,000 infants in the mother baby unit. Um, and our response rate was about 60% for all 54 hospitals each quarter. Um, our control chart charts do show a significant decrease in the rates of both hypothermia on admission to the NICU and to the mother baby unit. And then importantly, as a balancing measure, there was no increase in hyperthermia in both units. Um, Interhospital variability also improved with time. Next slide. So large scale QI projects are feasible and results in substantial gains in quality. Um, the perinatal care region structure implemented by the state regulations can successful, successfully facilitate multi-hospital QI projects. This initiative is now being expanded to all 22 perinatal regions in Texas. Um, an establishment of statewide granular patient level database will facilitate further QI projects. Next slide. So this is just a map to show you how we're doing. So we just started to extend this to the other 22 regions. And as you can see, we are slowly but um, surely trying to involve all the hospitals and um, it is moving forward. <laughs> Next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wen Nguyen. Um, uh, you know, we can go back to the other slide. Um, uh, to go back one slide. I just want to thank the uh, uh, folks that were instrumental in putting this project together. I won't read all their names out, but the uh, core group that was the temperature committee was, it has to be thanked for this. Uh, and as well, the 54 hospitals involved in the RAC were instrumental in actually making this happen. So thank them as well. Um, so that concludes our uh, three presentations. Uh, I am uh, now going to hand off to um, um, uh, the roundtable, and it's my pleasure to 
<clears throat> introduce the moderator for that session. Uh, we can stop sharing the slides. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. David Wysoli. Uh, he's a neonatologist from Houston, uh, the RAC perinatal chair for the PCRQ SETRAC, and the co-chair of the uh, Texas Collaborative for Healthy Mothers and Babies Neonatal Committee, and the chair of the Texas RAC PCR Alliance. He has had a long career in collaborative and local quality improvement. Uh, he's a member of the project work group for the TCHMB Neonatal Admission Temperature uh, Project, and he's also a well-known educator and has directed the specialty review in neonatology uh, since 2010. Uh, and of note, he is also the parent of former 28-week premature babies who are both actually thriving and doing really well. So Dr. Waisoli. Thank you, Dr. Savani. And so um, we, we are um, really thankful uh, for all of our, all of our panelists. Um, and we're going to invite back um, the, the speakers from earlier today, which include uh, Dr. Duane Persley. So thank you, Dr. Persley for coming back um, and, and hanging on with us. Uh, Dr. 